the way a musical comes to be, someone either hands, you know, you have a novel that you want to do, or, or someone hands you a, a screenplay, or, or you have a, a vision of a girl in a yellow dress that you want to do a show and think, what could we do with that? But this, sometimes you do a show because you want to work with particular creators. And uh, Lynn and Steven and I wanted to work together. And uh, so some, what you do, you just sit around a table, someone's kitchen table, and you toss around ideas. So we finally made a date to do so. And uh, Lynn says, we have a couple of ideas we wanted to talk to you about. And I said, okay. So then I go to Paris, and I go to the Museum d'Orsay, and I see the, the um, little dancer, the, the bronze replica of the little dancer, and, and wondered about her and thought about her. Didn't do anything about it, but just wondered about it and thought about it. And then I come back to the meeting with them, and I sit down, and the first thing out of her mouth is, have you ever thought about the little dancer at 14? And I went, whoa. Uh, I was like, <laughs> I was just thinking about her. So it was one of those meant to be moments when, you know, it was like one of those things I couldn't believe Lynn said it. So mm -hmm. it was really a, a meant to be idea. And, and, you know, I think Lynn, both of us, and, and anyone who dances, have grown up with that image of that sculpture. Um, it's just on your birthday card, on your Christmas card, and it's, it's just part of your life. And when you do see her, and uh, you, you do wonder about her, because she looks different from his other ballerinas. She has character, she's, um, the way she stands, you know. Uh, there's something about her that, that you feel that, um, she had a great personality, and, and Degas did sketch her a lot. He got obsessed with her, uh, sketching her, her face over and over in, in different other paintings, and so you, you realize that there must been, have been something more to this girl. So when Lynn said that, uh, we started the research on it and became even more interested. Yeah, I, I'll just add to that, that um, Stro and I worked together um, a number of years ago on a show called A Christmas Carol at Madison Square Garden, and we did it for 10 years in a row there, so I feel like I've done 10 shows with her, even <laughs> though it was that one. But um, the thing about uh, Little Dancer, it was sort of the same thing. I, I, I had seen her in many incarnations as a little girl, and I used to pose in fourth position in front of her. I grew up in New York, and so there she was at the Met, and I, and I felt very close to her. I've seen her at the Clark Institute. I've seen her in Paris. I've seen her, of course, here in Washington, where the original sculpture resides, the one that he actually made with his own hands, Degas. And so not only was I intrigued with the girl, this little stubborn face, and I, I thought, who was she, and what kind of world did she come from? And I went home. Uh, having seen her and I started doing some research and what began to fascinate me was the world of the Paris Opera Ballet in the late 1800s, the um, very mysterious and uh, uh, somewhat dangerous world for these young rats, the little rats as they called the young dancers, who um, were always uh, being told to socialize with the rich uh, patrons of the ballet. Uh, that was a very accepted thing at the time, and I became fascinated by that. And then I started researching Degas. And that's where, in a, in a weird way, the story um, began to feel like there was some dramatic potential. It wasn't just about a girl, but it was about a man losing his eyesight at a, at a uh, you know, moment of, of crisis in his own career, who encounters a young girl. And, and what's true about Degas was not only was he losing his sight and turning to sculpture, um, you know, with his hands because his, his eyesight was failing him somewhat. But um, this, the, the, the relationship, they lived in the same neighborhood, oddly. Um, the, the, we know facts about the young dancer, the, the real Marie van Goethem, that she had two sisters, one the older who was a courtesan, and the younger one actually became a famous dancer. Um, but Marie vanished into the mists of history. Uh, her death date is not recorded. Nobody knows whatever happened to her. But she was dismissed from the ballet, and but not before she participated in making this immortal work of art with this famous actor, a uh, famous artist. So you know, you wonder how did an artist meet the girl? Played by a famous Played actor. Played by a famous actor. How did they meet? How did they? What did, what did she inspire in him? How did the the sculpture? Uh, how, what what initiated the idea for? the sculpture, was it his eyesight, was it her personality, and, and all, all through this, they're, they're, 
it, it began to seem like a great story to me. So that's what we pitched to Stro and um, over a, a kitchen table and some coffee. And I, I think Lynn and I have done maybe like 10 shows, probably at least together. At least. And uh, the interesting thing is we both love dance and we go to dance and we're fascinated by it and I'm fascinated by the people that create dance. And yet there is so little dance in any of our shows. And I was... Uh, really excited about the notion of doing a piece that was so not only dance cent centric but set in the world of of the dance and about creating dance and there's a ballet that's created uh, in the course of of our musical and um, just doing something that could be have lot large sections that were told strictly through visuals and music and movement and uh, you know I love writing vocal music but this piece uh, especially in Act Two features a major uh, psychological ballet. Uh, you know, a lot of shows have an 11 o'clock number where, you know, the hero or heroine goes out and belts out a show tune. And we have a full ballet that's so uh, amazingly brought to, to life by our actors, our dancers, our designers, and uh, Susan Stroman's choreography. So the opportunity to, to do something that was really about dance and would use dance was so thrilling to me. So I was uh, excited from the, from the get-go about this. I'll just add one quick thing to that, which is that, you know, when you write a show, you don't really know what it's going to be you, or where it's going to land. You just know you enjoy the story, you love the characters, you're writing something you're enthused about. And having seen the show come to life here, we really didn't know what we had written until we saw it coming to life on the stage here at the Kennedy Center. And I don't think we've seen anything like it. I'm talking about the creators of the show. We, we didn't know what we had. And it's something that takes ballet and it takes music and it takes uh, musical theater and it weaves them together in a way that we have actually never seen. So we're so thrilled to be surprised ourselves about the way it's happened.